ter turn to uh, Deuteronomy 6, if you have a Bible. We're going to look at just as 4 through 9. I wanted Michael to read 1 through 9 just to give you the context. So I'm going to read that again just to focus in on what God's Word says, and then we'll pray. It says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your what? Your heart and your soul and your might. Heart, soul, might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Let's pray. Our Father and most holy God, we ask that your Spirit would guide us as we seek to know your word. Help us, Spirit, to teach our children of the storehouses of your grace. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. So we here at Cross and Crown Church have been blessed with a lot of children, and uh, many of them aren't even here today. Do, I don't even know if we have a total number yet. Do we need to take a census of our children? <laughs> how many armies do we possess? Um, I don't know how many there are, but we've obviously got a lot, and the Lord has been very good to us. And since kids are a blessing from the Lord, we parents need to make sure that we're not squandering the blessing. Kids, so this, this message is primarily directed at you, and of course, parents, we should, you should all listen in as well, um, but don't panic, it won't be very long today, so you can breathe a sigh, sigh of relief. <laughs> so let's, I just want to summarize our text and help you guys understand what, what it's saying. In Deuteronomy 6, that first word, it says here, it's Shema in Hebrew. Uh, the Shema is a Jewish prayer, and it's something that's recited daily. And it also has everything to do with the unity of the Godhead, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the unity of who God is. And it expresses his covenant lordship. He is the covenant God. He is the Lord. That's how scripture um, describes him. So this section of scripture is meant to teach all of you, all of us, but especially you kids, um, all about the comprehensive and the all-encompassing nature of life on God's created earth. Okay, so... You are here on this earth for a purpose, and God is teaching us the all-encompassing nature of life. So in other words, children, um, your faith in Christ ought to touch every area of life. So I'm going to explain that in a minute. So you, you need to know that. That's why we say at Crossing Crown Church, all of Christ for all of life. So remember that saying, all of Christ for all of life. You got it down back there, Emma? All right. Okay. All of Christ for all of life. Okay, so the Bible says that we're supposed to hear. It says, hear, O Israel. We're supposed to hear. That is, we're supposed to listen to the Word of God as it gives us instructions each day. And the thing that helps us with this faith for all of life is the fact that we are commanded to love God with three things, he says here. Moses is writing. Three things. Do you remember what they are? Love the Lord your God with all your what? Your heart is first. So let's talk about that. Your heart, that is the, the thing that's inside of you, the thing that, that helps, um, the Bible describes it as where, the, where our desires are, the things we want, the things that we long for, the things we desire, the things that we put our love and our affection on, those types of things. So you're supposed to love God with your heart. You're supposed to love Him with all your soul. And your soul is what makes you you. It animates your body. You are a person created in the image of God. Your soul is imprinted, and your body is imprinted with, with the image of God. So your soul is the entirety of who you are. Both your physical body, you know, you can pinch yourself. You have a physical body. When you pinch yourself, does it hurt? Yes. Well, yeah, I don't recommend doing it too often anyway. But when you pinch yourself, it hurts. So that's your physical body. But the fact that you can speak... You know, you look at the animals outside and they don't really talk. Wouldn't that be cool though if they could? Yeah. That'd be awesome. Could you like, you know, your dog, you know, call him Bingo. Come here, Bingo. He's like, what do you want? <laughs> that would be funny if you could interact with your dog like that. But dogs can't talk and dogs don't have the same type of, you know, being as humans, as it were. So love God with your heart, love God with your soul, and then love God with your what? Strength. 
your, your might or your strength. Exactly. So that's our energy that we put forth every single day with the things God gives us. So to get really practical, children, when you're playing with Legos, for example, some of the guys like Legos, right? Some of the girls too, but you know, when you're playing with Legos, play with Legos to the glory of God. Okay. Play with Legos to the glory of God. When you're drawing a picture, all right? I know some of the some of the girls like drawing pictures. Yes. I got some for my birthday on Monday, which was really nice. Um, when you're going to draw a picture, draw a picture to the glory of God. Um, when you're outside with sticks and you're pretending to go to war, do it in terms of honoring God. Okay? Because there, as Ecclesiastes said, there is a time for war. So we should be ready for it. And so whatever you do, know that the Lord is with you. Okay, kids? Whatever you do, know that the Lord is with you with you. He promises to be with you always. So Deuteronomy 6 tells us that the words of God's law are meant to be in our hearts. We're supposed to treasure God's law. So we shouldn't, you know, throw it aside and, and, and bemoan it or cry about it or fuss about it. We should love it. We should love God's law. We should pursue it. It should be a delight to us. Um, Psalm 19 says it revives the soul. So the law does that for you. You should love the law. So we're supposed to learn the truth about God so that we can live accordingly. All right? So when we learn when we learn what God expects from us, we learn more about who he is and when we learn who he is, we can serve him obediently, we can serve him joyfully. And yet, also kids, I'm going to let you in on a little secret, okay? The Bible tells parents to teach children this faith. The Bible tells us to, to teach you. So parents do this, not the state. Okay? <laughs> Amen? Kids, your parents have a job to do with you. They are to teach you the Word of God. This means that we have to be, you have to be attentive to what it is they're trying to, to teach you and do with you. So pay attention to what your kids are, your parents are trying to teach you. Parents are not perfect. Right? Another amen. Parents are not perfect. Parents sin and mess up and... You need to know that God loves you. God cares with you. God's with you. God never sins against you. So the commands of God should be a regular discussion in the home. And when we're sitting at home, when you're out for a walk or out for a drive or at bedtime or in the morning, some are more spunky in the morning. You're excited about the morning. But every moment of every day is an opportunity to learn and grow and be faithful to the calling and purpose that God has on your life every day. So he talks about Moses writing here. Um, God talks about binding the law on your hands and your eyes and your house and your gates. And all that simply is to do is explain to you the all-encompassing nature of learning from God. It covers everything. There's no stone left unturned. God's law cares about how you treat each other on the trampoline. God's law cares about how you treat your sister or your brother or your friends. God, God's law cares about everything. So with our work, the things we see, the things we do, the things we play with, the, the, the words that come out of our mouth, things in our homes, things in our cities, things out in the country, every area, every opportunity, all of it is to be centered and focused on the commands of God. And God's commands, the Bible says, are not overwhelming. They're not hard. Jesus said his, his yoke is easy. It's a joy to follow the commands of God. It's your job as kids to know and learn how to follow God. So, the reason that you have to know the Word of God is because, newsflash, children, you're not going to be kids forever. You're not going to be kids forever. You're going to grow up. In fact, it's funny, the older you get, the more aware of time you tend to be, and then it feels like, you know, I'm running out of time, I'm running out of time. The older you get, it seems like time just rushes along. When you're a kid, it's like, I don't even need a clock. Who cares? It's sunny, let's go play. But you're growing, and but you're not going to be kids forever. So there are things we have to kind of, you know, sort through. For some of you, and that's very few of you, you are heading close to or you're in the teenage area of your life, um, or you're going to be there soon. Um, you're not a little kid, but you're not an adult, and that can kind of feel awkward because you're like in between. But it doesn't have to be awkward, and let me tell you why. The goal of all parenting 
is the maturation and holiness of children so that they can carry forth the dominion mandate. That's the goal. The goal is maturation, that's being mature, learning how to have self-control, the things that us parents, we haven't figured out <laughs> entirely, but we're trying to help. That's the goal. We are not children and parents. We are not raising children. We're raising adults. And one of the things we want our children to be comfortable with, parents, is the idea that there's always more to learn. There's always more to apply. There's always more. There's always more philosophy, more math problems, right? There's more history. There's more theology. And there's, there's more practical skills to learn, like carpentry or doing dishes or laundry or changing a flat tire. There's always something to do. Some of you kids, you're going to need to grow up and learn how to mow the lawn. And there's just so much, it seems like. But that's part of life, is to grow and mature. To learn how to have, a, do, do a, a skill. Um, you know, I, I, I can change a tire. I've changed brake pads with the help of John. <laughs> um, but there are things that I don't know. There's things, you know, Jordan doesn't know or Aaron or, you know, there's things we don't, none of us knows everything. But well, the cool thing is we know the person who does know everything. And that's God himself. So there's always more to learn, but don't get mad at that. Embrace it. Kids, your parents, they haven't figured it all out. So don't you worry about trying to figure it all out in one day. Take each day at a time. Learn. Grow. Now, some of you, who, who, raise your hand if you're less than 10 years old. All right, you're 10 years old or less. Okay. Some of you are younger than that. You don't even, some of you are so little right now. We're missing some of our babies, but they don't even know what, what's going on right now at the moment. <laughs> They don't know what I'm saying. But don't, no matter your age, your job is to familiarize yourself with and grow into your baptism. I want to talk about baptism. What does that mean? Baptism is a sign you're in the covenant. We affirm the right and duty of private judgment. When, and the parents, you are responsible uh, to, to come to that fruit conclusion, rather, on, on your understanding of that. But we do believe that... The, that um, we, our children are members of the covenant through baptism, and they're able to come to Christ through the agape meal. They are a part of that meal. So we partake of the communion meal in conjunction with our fellowship meal, and we call the whole thing a big, giant agape feast. Now, agape means love, all right? What does agape mean? Love. love. Okay. And the point of, the, of what we do on Sundays, for example, is celebrating Christ and the work he's done in all of us. So children, you need to pursue... All that said, you need to pursue your calling that God has in your life. Um, your life is supposed to constantly be a yearning more of, for more of God. You are to apply the faith your parents have, have given you to every single area of your life. So to grow into your baptism means that you are living within the confines of God's covenant. Christ is yours, you are his, which means that you must rely on the promises of God each and every day. All right. So we're, we're, we're wrapping up here, but I'm going to give you a visual here, okay? Think of it this way. You are all building a house. Kids, you're all building a house. It can be out of Legos or Oreos or whatever. I don't care. <laughs> Healthy Oreos. Um, so you're building a house, and you're going to grow up, and you're going to build this house as you grow, but what you need to know is your life is that house, Okay? So think of it like that. Your life is your house. God is this great architect. His word contains the blueprints for the building. And the way you get this done is by having proper tools. How many of you could build an awesome house with spaghetti? <laughs> yeah, Jax, I got challenge accepted. <laughs> oh, it's cooked. It's 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 fresh out of the uh, out of the uh, pot. Yeah. So who's going to build a great house with spaghetti that's like noodly and wet? You, you really can't. You can't. You can't do that. So you need the right type of tool. If you don't have tools, you don't have the ability to build the house the proper way, and at least not efficiently. And, and honestly, Jack, if you build a house out of spaghetti, you're going to kind of smell funny. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> so to build a house... You need hammers, you need saws, you need wood, and you need nails. And you need a whole lot of other stuff too, but those are the basics. 
You need to pour the concrete for the foundation. You need a whole lot of electricity and or battery power to make those tools work the way you do. So think of it this way. Everything your parents are teaching you, everything we're teaching here at Cross and Crown, all of those things and things at the dinner table, things at bedtime, things you know in the morning when you're out uh, outside playing or whatever the here in our gathering, whatever we're doing, whatever we're teaching you are all tools for you to build this house in a way that glorifies God. We're giving you the tools. We're telling you, here's the hammer, because sometimes you need a hammer. Not everything is a nail, but you need a hammer. <laughs> sometimes you need a screwdriver. Sometimes you need a saw. Sometimes you need wood glue or whatever it is. You need all these tools to build your life in a way by the way, that's what Jesus says, to build their house on the rock, not the sand. Israel was building their house on the sand. God's people build their house on something foundational, that's Christ. So you're building this great house, and we're giving you the tools. Some of you are learning to, to just read it. You're reading and writing right now. You're just focusing on reading, trying to learn how to spell certain words, um, like hapax legomenon, which is a Greek word, and it's a thing. Don't ask me to spell it. Uh, <laughs> I'm still learning to spell it. Um, some of you are like really into history. Some of you are really into science, okay? All of you are being taught the principles of scripture. So as you grow, you have more tools in your belt to build a house, your life, that glorifies God. So your parents are trying to equip you with what you need to glorify God with your life. So this also means that you're being weaned off of certain things. Your parents are trying to shave off and chisel away at the hard parts of your life things like selfishness and pride immaturity self-sufficiency okay the difficulty here is we parents have the same problems <laughs> and the lord is trying to shape us and mold us in the same process so all that means is all of us have to turn to the lord each day parents kids all of us so concluding this message is for the children, but obviously it's a message to everyone. Glorify God with your life. Learn new things every day. Uh, figure out how to solve problems by developing critical thinking skills. Explore God's created order. I mean, be, okay, let me, I looked this up because I was curious. Be fascinated with the fact that you know where a shrimp's heart is located? In his head. That's weird. I don't know if they have brains, but that's all I looked up. Okay. Be amazed that, guess what? Did you know that a snail can sleep for three whole years? Yeah, right. That's a sequestered time away. Uh, did you know that elephants are the only animal that cannot jump? And lastly, specifically McKenna, did you know that giraffes have no vocal cords? Isn't that amazing? I don't think they talk. Animals don't talk, and I don't know if they grunt. I just looked up some funny animal facts because I was curious. And I've never seen a turtle jump. Yeah, turtle. I, I don't know. Maybe they like hop off of a rock. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But like, you look at God's created order, and these are bizarre things. But how cool is God? Like, how how awesome is His mind that He could create a little snail that can sleep for three years? Some of us might need to sleep for three years. <laughs> but this is the beauty of living in God's world. And you get to go. The world is yours to take and make it something beautiful and something that glorifies him. So develop your purpose. Serve the living God. And by all means, have fun with it. Have fun with it. Let's pray. Um, Father, you are good to us and you are gracious. And I'm thankful for your word. And I'm thankful for each of these kids here with Cross and Crown and, and the several who couldn't be here today. Uh, we pray for them that you would teach them how to use their minds and their hands and their hearts for your glory as they learn uh, principles, as they learn how to deal with emotions and how they deal um, with problems and how to, how to think for the glory of God. And I, I pray your Spirit's blessing, especially as we think about the work here for the kingdom that we are called to do, um, that we could pass this baton off into the future and to these kids and just know full well that they are charting 
the same course and going the same way, and that is a mere Christendom. <laughs> so may you um, be glorified in our efforts, and may each of these children, all of them, uh, follow you, glorify you, and learn what it is that you've called them to do. Help them build the houses. In Christ's name, amen. Amen.